Good Sunday morning, friends. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Most High. It's wonderful to be in His presence again to share with you the joy of the Lord, the Word of God, the promise of this age. May the great Holy Spirit bless us today as we come together giving glory, honor, and praise to his name. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, approaching you by the way of prayer through the blood of Christ, may the great Holy Spirit anoint the word of God to our hearts, and may we have such a wonderful time of fellowship, feasting around the table you have spread. Receive O oh God, our gratitude, our thankfulness for your grace and mercy. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Praise God. Today, I read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 to 21, which reads thus. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say unto them, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Now here we see from this uh, text how Jesus was returning from the temptation in the wilderness and came back to Nazareth. And the Bible says he went to church. He went to the synagogue as his custom was, as his habit was to go into the house of God to give glory and praise to Jehovah. If we want to be like the Lord Jesus, then we need to be in church. We need to be able to worship God and give glory and praise to his marvelous name. Well, you may say, Brother Simon, uh, uh, we can't go to our church building because of COVID and because of government uh, restrictions and so we are not free to congregate in huge numbers as we normally do. Yes, that may be the case, but at least you can go to church by watching faithfully your church's website live stream what uh, they are offering from the word at this particular time. If you cannot have the entire loaf, then at least try to get a slice. We, a Christian ought to read their Bible, pray every day, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 
So the importance of church attendance cannot be overemphasized. For the Bible tells us, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner or the habit of some people are. Uh, they just dismiss it. They, 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 it's casual about it. And may I say this? What is the church? The church of God is not a building. Ecclesia, meaning called out ones. We are called into a fellowship. We are called to a fellowship with, our, with God and with our fellow men of like precious faith. So let us be faithful in this hour of change, where we are changing from attachments to buildings and possessions and things of that nature, uh, uh, to the realm where we enter into our spiritually, into our closet, where we are worshiping God in spirit and in the truth. So, so let the Holy Spirit bring about that mental and spiritual change that we ought to be just as faithful with our online stream because this is the church of today. This is the way that we practice church. This is the way we have church. So don't you approach it casually but soberly and seriously with righteousness and sincerity of the Lord God within your heart and may the Holy Spirit bless you. Praise God forevermore. So Jesus returned from the deserts, the wilderness, the, the place of temptation uh, where he, my friends, came back and returned to his hometown of Nazareth and went to the synagogue there to worship God. Now just imagine the scene in the synagogue. Uh, colorful Eastern garments all gathered together in the synagogue. And here comes this young uh, Jewish young man and enters into the synagogue also. And they all were together. And as Jewish custom was uh, and is, um, there are times when uh, individuals are allowed to read from the Torah. So Jesus rose up to read from the Torah and delivered the message of the Spirit of the Lord is upon me out of the book of Isaiah. And when he had finished, and this is where I take my topic from, the Bible says, and he closed the book and sat down. He gave it to the minister and he sat down. Oh, praise be to God. I'd like to speak today on the closing of the book of redemption. The closing of the book of redemption. My friends, the Bible says that he sat down. Now, when Stephen saw him, when Stephen uh, in the book of Acts saw the Lord Jesus after they had stoned him, mocked him Stephen the Bible says lifted up his eyes looked up to heaven and he saw the Lord and the Lord was standing the Bible says the Lord was standing praise God, hallelujah I'm so glad friends that Jesus is still standing up for us I am happy that he is still standing in the gap on our behalf. He is standing with us in between the judgments of God and the mercy of God. So he is like the rampart. He is our fortress. He is our great 
armor, the armor of God to protect us and keep us from the plagues and the wrath of God. So I am happy today that Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, is standing for us. My friends, let me say this. He is standing still as our great intercessor. Praise God, hallelujah. We need no saints. We need no one else. But look away and see Jesus only standing there interceding on our behalf. Father, I, I, I paid the price uh, of judgment. I took upon myself the sins of the world. I accepted it all and I paid for all their sins. Father, forgive them. They did not know what they were doing. For in the time of their ignorance and in their darkness, Lord, I tell you, Father, forgive them. Amen. And so I'm so happy that Jesus is still our intercessor. Aren't you happy that he is still our intercessor and that he is still standing up for us and standing in the gap? I want to say I am glad he is standing, still standing as our mediator. We need no other mediator for the Bible tells us clearly there is one mediator between God and man. The man, not the woman, not any other person, but the man, Christ Jesus, is the only mediator between God and man. And there is salvation in no other name but in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord from the glory of God. Hallelujah. I'm so very happy about that. I am glad that he is standing for us. Uh, praise God. Standing as our lawyer. As our advocate. The one who is standing and arguing or presenting our case for us. Thank God that we have Jesus Christ our Lord. This the greatest lawyer the world has ever seen. A lawyer that has never lost a case. For everyone that comes to him, he has the power to save. He has the power to heal. He has the power to deliver. He has the power to redeem. And so he stands in the presence and places his blood as the evidence and as the proof that the price was paid and now he can redeem back his purchase position. You and I who were once in Satan's pawn shop, you and I who once was in Satan's grip, now Satan has to let you go for because the price of your redemption has been paid and I'm so glad he brought me out of the pawn shop out of the miry clay and put my feet on the rock of ages to stay here and forevermore. Thanks be to God, hallelujah, for the Lord Jesus Christ who has brought me out for a great shout, glorifying and worshiping uh, God. Hallelujah. Here we are, brothers and sisters, with this joy of God in our hearts. Glory to God. Now, the Bible says that he closed the book, then gave it to the minister and sat down. Now, in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, we read in the scriptures, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book. Thank God it's him, not them, not, or they. But I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man, no man 
in heaven, in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereupon. So no man, no human being can open this book. No human being of himself can interpret this book. No human being by his exalted position, by his popularity, by his intellectualism, by his human accumulation of wisdom can open or interpret this book. For this book is held in the hand of Almighty God. And so the Bible says, John says, and I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look therein, thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth in all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Glory to God. The rest you can read where the elders rejoice, the four beasts rejoice. They sang a new song. Thou art worthy, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. And I beheld and heard a voice of many angels around the throne. And, and, and the elders and the numbers were, were 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Word is the Lamb to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. What a scene in Nazareth that day. What a scene also in heaven on that day. For the scene in Nazareth, my friends, was a prefigure of this scene that was to come. So we understand here clearly, amen, that the book was in the hand of the Father. Amen. There it was. The Bible tells us clearly that the Lamb came and took the book. Now, the Bible describes this Lamb as a Lamb that, that looked as if it was slain. In other words, a bloody Lamb, a bleeding Lamb. But not only was this Lamb bloody and bleeding, let us recognize that just as Jesus went into the wilderness and had a hung dinner of a fight, a trial, a, temp a temptations personally with the devil and overcame the devil. And that's why we can overcome today because he is over our overcomer. Now, he overcame the devil in the wilderness. How did he overcome? By the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. He always said, it is written. It is written. He referred the devil back to the word of God and he defeated the devil on the basis of the word of God. Now, here we find he comes out of the wilderness after his fight with the devil. But that was a prefigure of himself and how he, my friends, would go and have a great fight with Satan again. I, we call it the greatest battle ever fought. For there, he had this, the battle started in heaven. Of course, it was right through his ministry, but it intensified in the Garden of Gethsemane. When the Bible said, under the strain, the stress, the pressure of this greatest battle ever fought, that the, he's, 
the sweat became as blood and an angel had to come and be strengthening him in that garden oh thanks be to god that he went to calvary for us because after the great fight in gethsemane then he went to the great mount calvary battle and there my friends again we see him surrounded by devils on every hand devils mocking him him the word of god made flesh now those same devils are here today when he reverts back to his word form and those same devils are mocking him because he had no uh, beauty to be desired of him he had none of their graces he had none of their uh, acceptability but there he was hanging on that cruel cross on mount calvary to be mocked by man the creator being mocked by his own creation all because they did not recognize him the word that he did not have the kind of beauty they were thinking he didn't have the natural beauty he did not have the theological beauty he did not have anything that could draw them to him his reputation yeah, the things said about him, the things that were blackening his name, the very uh, background, his history of his birth and life, everything the devil took and dumped every dirt he could find upon Jesus and upon his name. But glory be to God, there is no other name as great as this name. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all and so here we find my friends that John heard a voice in heaven saying first of all let me touch on the fact that John wept and John was weeping because there was none to open this book and may I say John being in the spirit being in the spirit in the presence of God recognized that this book was an important book that held the secrets of God for the rest of, uh, of earthly life right back into eternity and John wept there in the presence of God and one of the 24 elders says John weep not John for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed John said and I turned to see this lion of the tribe of Judah but when I looked instead of seeing a lion there stood a lamb as it was slain in other words there stood a bloody bleeding lamb as if it was in a battle yes he was it was the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. And he was in the greatest battle ever fought. And he fought all the way through Galilee to Gethsemane and to up on the mountain in Calvary, back down in the valley of Gehenna or, or symbol or type of hell. The Bible tells us he went down into hell and there had a titanic battle with the spirits uh, for the souls of those imprisoned now for before his death and the, his blood as the Lamb of God was shed the patriarchs placed their faith in the sacrificial blood of the natural lambs that were slain but by faith as Abel had by revelation that they all had they recognized that the shedding of the blood of these natural lambs along the way was were symbols types shadows prefiguring the coming of the real lamb the the lamb of god that will not take away your sins for a year and you must come back 
to Jerusalem the next year to be cleansed again. But this lamb will take away the sins of the world. Once this man, as the Bible says, sat down. Oh, praise God. He just sat down and did away with our sins once and for all. It was all gone. Thank God my sins are gone. They're underneath the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm free. I thank God I'm free because this bloody lamb went into a battle. Praise God. Of course, brothers, being the lion, being the lamb, is speaking about the, the personalities of God that once he has, well, you receive him now as your lamb, as your redeemer or your savior. If not, his personality will change to sinners in the hand of an angry God. You will be in the presence of the living God who will then be the supreme judge. The, the, the white haired judge, the agent of days that will judge you by his word at that particular time. Now, brother, sister, here we see this lamb having gone through the great battle, going down into hell, having a fight there with Satan unseen. Just my friends, uh, the outward form of him hanging on the cross, being taken down and placed within a tomb. But his soul went into battle against the demons of hell. And a great battle was raging for our, our salvation. Oh, praise God forevermore. Here he came out now. And because he had paid the price for the church, as Boaz paid the redemption price for Ruth, a symbol and type of the bride of Christ, now he could come. So he came to the presence of his father, amen, and there presented his blood, his own blood, as the evidence that he had finished the mission the great work of redemption upon the face of the earth. Oh, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. So that cry went out that there was no man in earth, in heaven or under heaven that could uh, take this book and open the seals. No man, but God himself could. This is why Jesus said, I hold the key of David. Of course he holds the key for the opening of that book. He himself, my friends, is the key. And he opened up the book. Praise God. Hallelujah. Open up this great book of redemption. This seven sealed book for us. Uh, oh, glory to God that we could go free. Because when he went into hell, had that great battle with Satan, my God, Satan was the was the, the jail keeper, he was the jailer, and had them keys, no doubt, hanging on his waist, and sitting there gloating over the prophets and patriarchs who had gone before, that he could hold them there temporarily because the blood had not been shed. By the way, no one has to be held temporarily like that anymore because now the blood is shed. There is no such an intermediary place anymore as Paul made it clear, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Instantly present with the Lord. This is the way it is now by the grace of God from the time that Jesus died for our sins, the dispensations changed. We are not on the law. We are now on the grace. We are no more under the types and the shadows and the schoolmasters, but we have come to a supernatural graduation by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that has delivered us to walk into this marvelous, glorious light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Aren't you happy that you can say, I'm a Christian. I am truly serving the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I am happy today and the sunshine bright for all my sins have been taken away. So the, here comes this bloody, bleeding lamb. And just as Jesus took the book in Nazareth 
and reads out of the book and interprets Isaiah, the prophet, what was being said. And the interpretation was the manifestation. The manifestation was the interpretation. For he took the book reading about himself that he was the fulfillment of that scripture. He was the interpretation of that scripture. And he says to them in public, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. He could have literally said, but they might have crucified him right then. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your sight. Oh, glory be to God, for he was the interpretation of the scripture. He was the fulfillment of the word of God. Standing right before them, the unrecognized presence of the living God. And still, they did not recognize who he was. God being misunderstood by his own people, his own creation, not recognizing who he was thinking that he will come from star to star, coming with a golden chariot, coming with golden slippers, coming with perfumed lace handkerchiefs, coming, my friends, with beautiful locks upon him, and, and here he comes. They, they, they just couldn't accept him for who he was and what he was and how he appeared to be. The Bible says that he had no nothing that was... Uh, acceptable or admirable in their eyes it was a shock to them so they could not see God the Father living in the Son they could not recognize the living interpretation this living Bible this living fullness of the Word of God and here he stood that bloody lamb and there in hell with this great thing happening he goes up to Satan with those keys and all of the party in hell stopped the music stopped all the crazy madness of hell stopped there was oh silence my friends why because he grabbed the whole of those keys from Satan the keys of death hell and the grave and no one else has that power to open death, hell, or the grave but Jesus Christ. Anyone claiming to be able to do that in this day or any other day is antichrist against the word of God. For it's only Jesus Christ himself is able to do that. And he has never given that power to anyone else. Praise God. So he took away those keys away from Satan and his demons of hell. And if we go into uh, David speaking, he says that uh, in the book of Psalms, he reads about, uh, open up you everlasting gates so that the king of glory may come in. And there upon the battlements of heaven, as they looked out, they saw the Lord of glory coming. And behind him, he's coming with a multitude. I believe David looked ahead and saw Jesus bringing out those patriarchs and prophets with him after fleeing them from Satan's prison house. And as he's taking men, them captive and bringing them captive so he could send back glorious gifts unto men. The voice cried out, Who is this Lord of glory? Oh, who is this Lord of glory? And the Lord of glory answered back, The Lord mighty in battle. The Lord mighty to save. Glory to God. None other but Jesus Christ himself. The Lord that was mighty and is mighty to save. Praise God. And let them back into glory for they believed unto righteousness they were looking to the cross so they had to wait for the fulfillment of the manifestation of the word of God where the lamb will die the lamb would do battle the lamb would set them free the lamb would raise them up so they can walk in the streets of Jerusalem and the lamb will lead them back 
to heaven and the presence of Almighty God. And now we are here in our time and dispensation, not waiting to be taken out of an intermediary state. We are looking back, my friends, back to the cross. It has already happened. The price is already paid. We are free because Jesus said to the thief on the cross that very day, he says to him, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Today, not tomorrow, not after somebody prays you out of there, not after you've paid a huge sum of money, not after you, you give to charity, but today thou shalt be with me in paradise because you ask for my mercy, you ask for my pardon, and you ask, you spoke to me and recognized who I was. The word of God back then made flesh. You are being called upon to recognize the word of God for today, who he is in the form of the word of God. Not that Jesus in your imagination back there walking on the streets. Yes, that was wonderful. But God has and more fed himself. He has now come back into the form of his word. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So now, brothers and sisters, he has taken them back to glory, took the book. Amen. Now you say, well, Brother Simon, what was in that book? Why was it so important that the lamb had to take the book? Why was it important that Jesus had to take the book there in the Gospel of Luke and then interpret the prophecy of Isaiah and by manifesting the prophecy of Isaiah? First of all, I want you to know that that was the seven seal book. That was closed, but now we find that the book is opened. As it said in the book of Luke, he opened the book and then he began to read out of the prophet Isaiah. Amen. But first he opened the book, then he began to interpret the book. Praise God, hallelujah. Even so, we see in the book of Revelation, he had to open those seven seals with seven blasts of thunders as the word of God, was fullness of the word, seven number perfection, came forth perfect understanding, supernatural interpretation and divine communication by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, thanks be to God. So here, my brother and sister, this mysterious book was a book of the seven seals and that out of those seven seals it was revealing to us the mystery coming of Christ. No man knoweth the day or the hour. Oh praise God, hallelujah, amen. But now we can recognize the coming of the Lord, the presence of the living God, hallelujah, the mystery coming of Jesus Christ. I'll move on from that. Uh, I will expand on that right now, but I'll move on, on uh, from that. Praise God. And the mystery coming of Christ is not a man. It's not a human. It's the Lord himself that has descended with a shout with the voice of an archangel on the trump of God. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. This book also is the predestinated mystery will of God. In the Bible it says the mystery, uh, the predestinated mystery of his will. Some years ago this was made clear that it is God's predestinated mystery will. Like a man has a will. And that will is kept secret, locked away. For in that will is the names of all of his beneficiaries and their inheritance of what they were going to receive when that will was read by a prophet, by a lawyer, by one who was designated for that particular job. And here we see clearly in the word of God, hallelujah, this book, held the names uh, of the held the names and the portions the positions the places the purpose of these beneficiaries of what <clears throat> they were 
to receive. Thanks be to God, brother, sister. So this book held the names of God's elected in there. God's elected children, their names were in there. The names that were in the book, Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world because as you know, God is omnipotent, om omniscient, he's all-knowing. That Our God doesn't have to wait until we make a decision now to accept him, to know who would accept him. God already knew that from before the foundation of the world and placed the names of those whom he already has foreknown to will receive him and place their names on the Lamb's book of life. There is no new name going to be written in glory for the names are already recorded in the Lamb's book of life. So now <clears throat> we go from this to see that in his mystery coming, he has come supernaturally to call out the names of his elect, to call them out of Babylon, call them out of any darkness, call them out of any habits, call them out of any dark, depressing position, situation, any sinful chains of imprisonment of the body, mind, or spirit spirit or soul that they are experiencing he has come to call his own and you know that beautiful wonderful song he knows my name i want you to know he knows your name that's how he called Nathaniel. That's why he called Peter, Andrew, and many others in the Bible. He knew their names. He was trying to let them know that though he was now in a body, who he really was, that he knew their name from before the foundation of the world. That's why he could say, you are Nathaniel, or your name is Peter, son of so-and-so. You are this person. That's the reason why he was under that kind of anointing. For the Spirit of God, the fullness of the Godhead, dwelt in him bodily. He was Emmanuel, God with us. But now he has returned to be God in us if we will let him come and have his habitation in our live within our hearts and lives. So now we find not just back then, but right now the seven seals have been revealed and God is calling out the names of his elect to come back to him and to know him in the power of his resurrections. And just as much as he called the disciples back there by their names and said, come, follow me. They never heard a person like this before. They never seen anything like this before. But when they heard that voice, when they recognized what he was saying, they followed him without a question or a shadow of doubt. No bishop, no priest, no pope, no high authority, no great figure could uh, stand against it because they were thirsting for the true word of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the realities, the unfailing reality of the living God walking and moving among us. And there he was, standing alone, look away to Jesus, praise God. So, <clears throat> the Lord calling out the names of all the elect, calling them out of sin. He's calling you out of your sin, calling them to their inheritance, to take possession, to possess their possessions. He is calling them out by their names, praise God, calling them to take their position and purpose in the plan of God for all God's gifts, find their appropriate places in the fullness of time. Praise God. I want to know, brother, sister, this calling is going on right now. You say, well, well, God is calling me out by my name, not by your natural name. Amen. <clears throat> 
but your supernatural name by which he knew you before the foundation of the world. The songwriter says, yes, he knew me. Yes, he, yet he loved me. He knew you. He loved you. And now he's here by his word to call you out to attention of his word and to recognize him whom to know is life eternal. Glory to God. So that call started. Amen. And it started way back from the, into this Gentile age as he began to call out his elect from the time he began to call his disciples and it continued right through the book of Acts, right through the church ages, using the seven spirits of God, the seven messengers, the seven angels to the church, which are one and the same. Oh, praise God, the angel messengers of the church, which are men, anointed men sent to each age that anyone could recognize that they are the messenger, they are the angel to the church for that age as Elijah was in Israel and even though Jezebel did not recognize him as her pastor, yet he was because his life, his ministry stood the test of time and was anointed and vindicated by God and proved to the entire world who he was for his words came to pass every time. Glory to God. And so it came right down through the seven church ages where God used each messenger to call out the elected for his particular age. Luther called his, Wesley called his, and so on. Right on down to the Pentecostal age, which I believe and teach that Brother William Marion Branham was that messenger to pent the Pentecostal church age to call out of the Pentecostal church age into the new church age of the capstone ministry of Christ himself, call out the believers to the fullness of the word, not bound by denominational boundaries, not bound in their mind by denominational theories, precepts, and platitudes, but they are, uh, they are free in Christ to recognize what the word of God is saying to them, not who do they say I am, not who do they tell you that I am, but when you look into the word, who do you say I, the son of man, am? Who do you say I am? What do you think of Christ, the anointed word of God for the hour? This is the question. This is what is taking place right now. Praise God, hallelujah. So the names are being called, but what I'm about to say, friends, when he had finished doing most of his, his reading of the book, the Bible said he closed the book. I want to say to you, my friends, the book of redemption is closing fast. I believe we are right around the time when the last ones are now being called. I want to say to you, come home, come home. It's wedding supper time. Time to go home in the presence of God. I don't mean time to die physically, but die unto yourself spiritually and come in the presence of God and feast upon the manna from on high. Feast upon the revelation of the word of God. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. The book is closing fast. The names of the elected seed are being called out. Not Jim, James, Susan, Sarah, Hannah, Jim, Jack, whatever your name is. But what the Spirit is revealing from the Word while He's calling your name. And your Spirit and the Spirit of God from this Word. Oh, praise God, the deep calling to the deep and the deep responding and a fellowship and a communication, supernatural communication by the power of the Holy Spirit taking place and God is calling his elect by his anointed word 
for the hour. Amen. The voice of God, like it was back in the garden, calling to his sons and his daughters, Adam, Adam, where art thou? Where are you hiding? What, what, what leaves of religion are you covering yourself with? What leaves of, of sin and carnality and selfishness are you covering yourself with? Come out of the bushes. Come into the light. Come to the word of God. And so God's Holy Spirit is calling today just as it was back then. The great shepherd in this hour is calling his sheep. And he's calling them by their names. Back to the word. Back to your Bible. Back to the original faith. So search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. I know there is eternal life in there. But the way you are searching. You only think you'll find it that way. My friends. Let me tell you this. You must know him for yourself. You must recognize him by his own voice. When he turned and he was raised raised up not when he just walked in Galilee oh but when he raised up and Mary looked for him looking for him in a dead tomb but only to hear a voice behind her saying Mary oh praise God hallelujah my God she thought it was the gardener at first but when she turned it is the Lord. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. When Jesus comes and calls, if you are of his seed, the life of God in you, no matter how much it was asleep, it will wake up and recognize the word of God for the day and bring you to the light of the hour. Oh, praise God. So the great shepherd is now calling out to his sheep. Wherever the sheep, whatever pastures the sheep were grazing in, that shepherd is now calling out his sheep and calling them back to him. The book is about to be closed. The last name is about to be called. Oh, praise God. I want you to come. Look into this book again. Open your Bible. Read from it. Even if it's five minutes a day, listen to the word of God like this. Listen to this message or any other message like that. this again, brother, sister, and see, is my name written there on this page, white and fair? In the book of my thy kingdom is my name written there. May the Holy Spirit of God answer that question for you within your own heart. There is little time left, friends. Little time, time left whatsoever. L little time left for the Gentiles. And then the rapture. And very little time left for our Jewish brethren. Praise God for them to come. For them to come to their rise. And rise to prominence. We the Gentiles must leave the scene. The bride must be caught up. Uh, out, of the, out of here. And the remnant. The foolish virgins of the, of the church of the living God to be left behind, to be purged during that tribulation period. But out of the purging of the tribulation period, they will come forth as gold as well as our Jewish brethren purged of their unbelief by a national rise and revival amongst them and to come into their national redemption inheritance full inheritance Abraham's seed coming into full inheritance and coming to their glorious reward that will be given out by the hand of the Lord himself may the Lord bless you real good on from this ministry and preaching of the word accept it oh believe it receive it in the name of Jesus Christ, whom I love and whom I serve. God bless you. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ministry of the Word of God and that you can still pick up a, a, a something that is just a, a jawbone of an ass, something that is not even looked upon from man, uh, not even recognized, but you can use that to defeat thousands of demons.
demons and Philistines by the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Father God, you don't need our intelligence. You don't need our wisdom. You don't need our strength. Who's going to teach you? Who's going to advise you? Who is going to tell you what to do? Who by wisdom can even search you out? May you search our hearts, Lord, and draw us closer to yourself that we may know you in, in fellowship with you, not only on the pages of the Bible, but in the power of your resurrection and by demonstrating your spirit that he lives within us and reigns forevermore. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, God bless you, believers. God bless you. Be encouraged, saints, wherever you are. Lift up your head. Look up. Be encouraged. Serve the Lord. If you were cooling off, lukewarm, wake up. Be on fire again. May the zeal of the Lord consume your spirit. Draw you into a life of servanthood, service, and living for him like you never before, before done before. Uh, committing yourself to him with a new uh, commitment and consecration and say I and my house will serve the Lord oh friends be fearless and serve him and God will bless you and you'll meet him when he comes again God bless you real good until Wednesday night at 7 30 when I will be back into the Patmos vision and the the sub uh, topic on that will be Patmos vision the believers rest we want to speak about the believers rest under that great heading of the Patmos vision trusting that you will be there and the Holy Spirit will again bless you open up our hearts and we will receive God's word next Sunday I'll be back in the house of God with a very important message that will reach to this age and it pull the wraps off of Satan and make things a bit clearer that we will help one another, each other as Christian brothers and sisters, a long life's way. May the Lord bless you until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen.